Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger, and welcome to Dare to Dream podcast. And I am very excited to be with you, as always. I'm just back from a trip in San Diego, where I spoke on stage several times. Uh, something I'm playing with in the level of authenticity is just really feeling free to express myself. <laughs> I'm thrilled to say it was rather successful this past weekend. You know, something that I realized last year, I went through a huge healing experience in the last two years, and something that I recognized is how serious I had become in my life, which was like, who is this person? <laughs> who is that? Because when I was an actress and a singer, which was the majority of my life into my adult life, but a former life at this point, when I was that, I was a character actress. And when I was on stage, when I was in whatever medium it was, film, TV, I was funny. Like that was my thing. And I loved it and was all filled. Entertainment was a lot of joy for me. I actually love making people laugh too. But that person quite went away. So I have been aware of it and aware of letting her play more. So I, my God, I had a good time. <laughs> I had a really good time going on stage, turning around, using my cell phone for a selfie while taking the audience in the back, background of the picture and, and much more. And just really letting some spontaneous information flow out of me. And the response was incredible. You know, it was a lot of accolades. It was, a, it was people, including my sibling, who was like, I had no idea you could do that. That was so great. But really the important thing is my stepping into authenticity is just like this reconnection realignment that's been amazing and fun and feels so good. So I hope we're gonna have a lot of realignment today and a lot of lifting of things and conversation around where dreams may be stuck for you. So I have some guests who are gonna be coming on in a minute and talking to you directly about that. And I'm excited too because I am now on Patreon. Some of you are going to know what that is. Some of you don't. Great. I'm going to explain it to you. But, you know, Patreon is actually a platform. It's sort of like crowdfunding, but a lot of podcasters are using it. And it's great. I've been doing this for 11 and a half years. And 11 and a half years, we never really had a place where somebody who was a big follower of the show, a subscriber to the show, could make a donation. But it's possible now. And you could donate a dollar, five dollars, cup of coffee, or way more. But trust me, it makes a huge difference here because what I do actually takes a lot of time. And I put a lot of attention and love into what I create for you guys. So Patreon, if you go to patreon.com slash dare to dream, you're going to receive exclusive experiences only from my devoted listeners. And if you're ready to challenge yourself and consider the possibilities, ta-da, here we are. Join me at patreon.com slash dare to dream. I am a longtime member of the Make Your Dreams Happen Influencers. I interview successful, brave, and spirit and heart-based leaders who share their insights. So what if you knew that you could not fail? What would it take for you to feel completely free and bold in your life? On Dare to Dream podcast, I break the status quo. And if you are right now feeling restless and bored, then you have a bigger purpose to fulfill. So at patreon.com slash daily dream, I offer you free bonus episodes and meaningful PDF reports on subjects to move your business ahead and make a profitable business. Patreon.com slash dare to dream, cup of coffee. Just know you'll always get free content here, but there you'll get a lot more bonus material and access to me. So it's a free membership platform. I invite you to join me there at dare to dream. Again, it's patreon.com slash dare to dream. And thank you. Thank you for going there, checking it out, considering it and donating. I really appreciate you. And so the great show we have today is with Philip and Jane Mountros. They are holistic coaches, trainers, personal transformation pioneers. They're the founding directors of the Awakenings Institute, a nonprofit organization dedicated to creating a more loving world. Their new book, 
you can see I read it a lot and I have <laughs> lots of notes here. It is the ultimate paradigm shift, a guidebook for creating the life you were born to live. And they've published many books and trainings on holistic EFT, which means emotional freedom technique and life coaching, life purpose, manifestation, and more. Their website is gettingthrough.com. T-H-R-U, by the way, getting through.com slash holistic. So Philip and Jane, welcome to Dare to Dream. It's great to have you. Thank you. Great to be with you, Debbie. Thanks for inviting us. This will be fun. Can we just say the the website is gettingthrough.org. Just yes, so. it's O-R-G. Yeah, org. thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> so people can actually find it. I think, we, I think we actually own .com and it might forward, but I'm not I'm not 100% positive. We don't usually have that as an issue. So Yeah, it's, and I'll repeat it later, but just, you know, I calm everything. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're real calmed out here, but it is org and we'll repeat yeah, it later so you have it. <laughs> and it's also in the show notes and everything, so make sure you definitely go to gettingthrough.org. Okay, awesome. Thank you for that correction. Yeah. And tell people, like it was in the bio, but I know based on my research of you and the reading of your book, you do so much more. What is the work that you do today out in the world? Right. Well, let me put it in the kind of the story of the context of the of the show today about the ultimate paradigm shift of what that is and how people can really experience that and, and leverage their life. Uh, long ago, <laughs> Uh, Jane and I were like probably a lot of people listening and watching, uh, very intent on, on spiritual growth, personal growth, transformation. And um, at the time, there wasn't as much available. We ended up in a Gurdjieff Spensky school. Uh, that's a sort of a psychological school, spiritual growth. And we learned a lot, and there was a lot of techniques and tools that we integrated and even have written about and teach. But there was a limit to that um, group because they missed the healing part, the healing part, the shadow part, the, the removing the blocks. So you mm. can't just keep bringing in the light. And, you know, I love that title of your, of your show, your podcast, Dare to Dream, Debbie, because that's it. And when you dare to dream, things will come in your way, as people know, and what to do about that. So as time went on, uh, Jane uh, became an architect. I became a school teacher, a traditional school teacher. And we were still pursuing and learning the, these healing and coaching tools. But we kind of got to a limit with our traditional conventional jobs, burnt out. And that really took us more fully into this, this personal spiritual growth realm and we started doing trainings individual and with groups and doing a lot of writing and we we realized uh, that uh, people started shifting when they got closer to their inner wisdom and intelligence and living by that and inner I know most, wisdom and intelligence yeah, okay. or your soul and mm -hmm. I know a lot of your listeners can relate to what I'm saying or they probably wouldn't even be listening as my guess so the idea is that to be following your intuition and your heart. Uh, so the idea is to be aware of it, which people are, but to live it. To live it is the big shift, and that's what we're here to talk about. Hello. <laughs> Jane, Jane, you want to chime in on this? I just want to make a comment based on that, because it's, it's really interesting in the world in which I live and the, the amazing, um, very high-functioning entrepreneurs and small business people I know. There's just a piece of that when you say, the because there's a huge distinction between having a dream, aspiring to your dream, talking about your dream, wishing about your dream, telling people about your dream, but actually creating your dream. That's a whole different journey, yeah. and you're right. And live it, living your dream. And living it, and things do come up. So, okay, Jane, with that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I just, I love your theme and it, I, I just, one thing is I noticed um, just when we, when we came into Zoom, you had a little note there about um, featuring you and your brilliance. And I thought that is such a, a true part of it because life for each of us should feature ourselves and our brilliance, bringing our brilliance out into the world. And that's what the dream is. It's like, the thing that makes us feel most alive and excited about being here. And with our background, when Philip was an educator and I was an architect, it was okay for a while. And I think we all go through that kind of 
progression when we grow up, you know, we earn a living and, you know, we had, we got, we earned the living, we had the house and the cars and all those things. And, you know, following the rules, <laughs> really, even though we, we were very spiritual, but we we're still following kind of the rules about how life is supposed to be. And then it got really boring. Right. And it, for me, it really felt, I didn't, I wasn't specifically religious, but I felt like my soul was dying. And I didn't mm -hmm. know what that was, but it was like all of my energy was being drained from me. And I, I really didn't think I could continue. So we were in such a desperate state. We had no choice but to dare to dream. You know, it's kind of like <laughs> we had to be able to live in a different way. And that's really our focus is, you know, the spirit inside of us wants to soar. There is that, you know, that part of us. And that's why we're here, really, to me. It's just, and, and it is really, it's living the dream and then as, in essence, being the dream. Mm -hmm. Because the joy is just the journey of, of being you and and what you were saying about being able to just get out and express yourself you know being yourself and feeling okay i'm good <laughs> i'm okay with who i am yeah and that's beautiful i just i love the whole thing i mean that, that makes me feel excited what we mm -hmm. want to do is feel excited about being alive yeah 100 percent it's very scary, it's exciting, it's trepidatious, you don't know what's going to happen when you embark on creating a dream, but it is certainly <laughs> a thousand percent being alive. So I feel yeah. like we're preaching to the choir here, <laughs> and if ever there was a time, ever, this year, right now, where people are at a crossroads, there are people who are actually incredibly successful that I know, really successful, spiritual contributors, brilliant at what they do, and they're at a crossroads saying, there's something more, there's something more that needs to be birthed out of me, expressed right. out of me. And then there are people who are trying to express their gifts, but they're, they're operating at such a, a level of lack of financial consistency or client consistency or clarity on path. There's many pieces. So people are stuck in various ways. So those are some of the ways I have seen. What have you seen about what keeps people stuck? One of the uh, really good description of it, Debbie, that we write about in our Ultimate Paradigm uh, book is what's called set points, which some people know that term. A lot of people actually are unfamiliar with it, but it's a good way of describing our beliefs, our mental and emotional attitudes. Some of them came sort of genetically, but most of them are developed over time, a lot of them in childhood. So it's the way we, you look at the world, and, and that term set point started in the 1980s when a researcher uh, uh, found that people's weight is, is somewhat determined on how, how they how heavy they think they are how light they are so that extends to many things happiness success so where you are in your mind that point is a boomerang that you keep returning to default maybe a little up or a little low and when you realize that uh that's one thing and then the other thing is you can actually change that you can change your set point uh, and there are different set points in different areas of your life and your health and your wealth and your career, your relationships. Uh, Jane, you want to uh, uh, add to that? Well, if you take it a little further, um, really your outer world reflects your inner world, right? So if your inner world is operating at a point of kind of like, well, I'm afraid, you know, this won't work for me or I'm afraid to put myself out there because someone might criticize me or whatever you know, whatever it is that's holding a person back, your outer world is going to reflect those fears. So you're going to live in a more fearful world. And if you look at, in terms of dreaming, that is a level, you know, it's a certain level that you tend to keep going back to. And if you look at it in terms of brain science, the idea of neural pathways, it's like there are these little roads and then these big freeways in our brain that we tend to travel over and over like, I'm not worthy, you know, or, or I don't deserve this, or, or, you know, I'll never get anything, you know, that I want. I, it never works out for me. We travel those pathways over and over. What we need to do is recreate, you know, create new pathways in the brain. Cool. So, that is really okay. the question, I feel like. So if people have, when you say set point, I love that because I understand it from decades ago with 
with weight, weight loss, or weight right. stasis is that it's essentially a thermostat. And right. It, right, and wherever it's set, it's going to automatically find a way back to it. Right. So if we're living our lives through set points. How do we uh, change it? How do we make it what we prefer instead? Well, the uh, to give you the sort of the the ending, the cliff note endings of 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 what the ultimate paradigm shift is is living your life as a creator. I want to pause there, living your life as a creator and doing that as much as possible. Uh, so that's very exciting and that's shifting your set point where you're living more in creative spirit. You're out there venturing forth, doing it in an intelligent way, not a crazy impulsive way, not a self-destructive way. Uh, so that's setting yourself up for success and that may mean uh, managing stress, worry and hurry, that, that's the killer that, and dealing with stress, using it, uh, bouncing back from it, using resilience. So for instance, um, I was helping a lady just the other day, I'll call her Barbara individual person. And she's worried about talking with people about doing healing work, you know, like what you're saying, getting out there and having criticism or, or rejection, which is part of it. So she knows that she shouldn't be that afraid of, of criticism and rejection, just like most of the people listening to this. Yeah, of course, I know I shouldn't do that, but she is doing it because it's a set point. So you need to change from uh, the moment you wake up to when you retire to position yourself that I'm not a person who's, who fears rejection. Yes, I handle rejection. I may get disappointed. I bounce back from it, but I'm in a different position of managing stress, being more in joy and easy, being more heart-centered. That's who I am and who I am becoming. That's who I see myself becoming. Yeah, I used to be that way yesterday, but today, wait a second, it's like an alcoholic. I'm not going to take that drink. I'm a recovering alcoholic. I'm not going into the bar. I want to. I'm used to it, but I'm not going to do it. I'm now going to do something different. I'm going to breathe. I'm going to walk. I'm going to do some EFT tapping. I'm going to do something else. Uh, Jane, you want to add to that? Um, sure. Sure. You could say also in terms of actual change that it, we describe it as the difference between knowledge and being. So you can, and you can know it. It's kind of like, I think you were referring Debbie to situations where you know it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to be limited, but you are. <laughs> and so we, all the knowledge in the world is great. Knowledge is great, but there's another level when going back to the pathways, when you change the pathways, and there's this idea of four levels of, of change, you can get to a point where you're what you could call unconsciously confident in being a creator of your dreams and manifesting the life that you want. It becomes like your normal, natural way of being because that's those are the pathways you're traveling. And um, it's really about intention and focus too, and, and healing. Sometimes there are blocks, you have to heal them. Mm -hmm. So health, wealth, relationships, career, money, and, and many other dreams that could have set points or limitations. So people who want to alter them, I mean, I hear generically what you're talking about, but what are the specifics? Somebody really like, I'm ready for this. I'm so tired of that. <laughs> Neuroscience really is a broken record, right? It is something that is been instilled in us or we have accepted so long it becomes a groove that we recycle over and over again. And when we're ready to just get off of the track and say, okay, been there, done that, didn't work well, really want to create something different. I came here to play big. What is possible? What can people do to like just really stop the noise and be doing what they prefer to do? Well, can I go into this a little bit? Because it I just, it, it's kind of like my main theme in life is to shift my focus to, if you say it's all vibration, you know, we talk about, you know, you're kind of wallowing in the mud and the sphere and all these things, and you want to be up here, kind of in the higher reaches of potential, right? Um, so what you want to do is vibrate energy that matches what you want. Of course, you need to know what you want, too. <laughs> I mean, assuming you know what you want. Um, and my, my main focus uh, over time is being in a state of joy and ease. So if, if you say, 
imagine life is a game and you can make up the rules. Well, why not make everything joyful and easy? So if you think like, I want to, I want to be prosperous. I want to be abundant. I want to have, you know, wealth. I want to have all the things, you know, all these things that I want to enjoy. I want to make a difference. If, if all of that could happen more joyfully and easy, how could that change your life? So if you start vibrating joy and ease and then keep telling yourself over and over, this is going to be joyful and easy for me. Mm -hmm. Today, it's joyful and easy for me to create what I'm doing today or and then, you know, in the end, what I want. That's a complete reality shift. And that's why we call our book also the ultimate paradigm shift, because we're talking about a shift in the way that we exist in the world. We don't see things as fixed anymore, right? If they're fixed and we can't change them, then forget, you know, you can forget the whole thing. <laughs> but if, you know, if, if it's more fluid and we can start to play with reality and make it more of what we actually desire, then we're in a completely different world. You know, when I was young, I, <laughs> I used to carry a lot of stress. So I would be terrified if I had to go into a boss's office, I mean, I don't know what they saw, but to be inside of my body was not fun. The tension, the anxiety, the just being in the same proximity as somebody who had authority and just not knowing and, huh. And I, I, I played with something you're talking about. And I mean, I was young. So <laughs> I was like, you know, very early 20s. And I started to use something just because what I was doing was too painful and I wasn't showing up, right? There was no boss who could have a conversation with me because I was a wreck. So I started to do this thing where I sat there and I felt all those feelings and I felt all the tension and all the anxiety, but I would look at the person who was speaking, they were usually speaking, and I would think to myself in my head, I love you, I yeah. love you, I love you you love me, you love me. And I don't even know if you can feel me right now, speaking of vibration, but everything started to change and I started to get really calm and relaxed. There was somehow a connection and uh, it actually, everything went very well and I was able to manage myself, my anxiety and stress, be mostly present for the mm -hmm. conversation and that is one of my first experiences of mindfully taking control of something and making a different choice and getting a completely different result. So let me tell you, I was walking into everybody's offices back when I was really young, you know, in the corporate setting and like, I love you, I love you. I love you. <laughs> I had just so I could connect and have better relationships and results. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that makes me think of something. I, this wasn't part of our plan for what we were going to talk about today, but something that I do for creating the things I want, and it's just what you were saying. It's like, and you can fill in the blank. It's like, okay, I love, say, I love abundance, and abundance loves me, and life wants me to have more of it. Or I love cars, and cars love me, and life wants me to have more of them. Or I love to have this fantastic creative career and this creative career loves me and life wants me to have more of it. I mean, what you, it's kind of like, I love blank and blank loves me. You can say it for another person or a thing you want. I, I actually did it, it. For me, it actually works. <laughs> it might sound silly, but it does. It just, it, and it is, you know, it's all here. In well, essence. That's so beautiful. And I, I'm going to, I wrote it down. I love that actually, but it, I it works. <laughs> energy is often very magnetic. So mm -hmm. if you are to use that for whatever you want to create, I love love and love loves me. You know, I love having a healthy, strong body and my yeah. health, every piece of that is pretty yummy as opposed to where people usually live, which is I want to create, but I'm opposed to the creation, even if it's right. subconscious. And as I know very well, resistance creates paralyzation, right? It right. completely yeah. demagnetizes the dream for manifesting. So what you're describing is actually a beautiful flow of reciprocity between you and the dream and the dream and you. Right. So yeah. 
I love that. Can I, can I say one more thing is, Please. yeah. don't just say it once. Keep saying it whenever you think of it. That's mm -hmm. what I do. Like there's, I'm using it with something we're creating right now and it's working fantastically well. And I just do it every day whenever I think of it. I love this and this loves me and it wants me to have more of it. <laughs> and if you can put it in your own words too. I love this and this loves me and God wants me to have more of it or life wants me to have more of it or the creator wants me to have more of it or mm -hmm. more of it's coming. Just, just play with it. But it's just that basic I love blank and blank loves me. <laughs> I try to big things, small things. I'm using it more and more, actually. And so uh, if, if people are using ultimate solutions for a direct path, they're basically connecting the heart, the soul, the mind. Are there other components in that? Well, we have this uh, roadmap. We, we call it a heart of, of success roadmap, which is kind of interesting. If you do want to first of all you'll dare to dream that's a that's sort of a starting point we call it set your course um and you want to get help from people who might <laughs> have been there before who can guide you we use the metaphor imagine going on a trip and having no idea how to get there wouldn't you want to have some kind of map or help to get someplace and that be true with your dreams too so this heart of success roadmap by uh, debbie what we we write about and teach you set your course and that might mean breaking free from the the herd or the the status quo uh, and that can take a little bit of energy and and bravery too as, as we know and then uncovering your heartfelt joy. This is this is a seven-step roadmap. So, what what makes you joyous? You know, what what makes your heart sing? What's the music that you're hearing on the inside? You really play it, and and feel it, and sense it. Find out where it is. And it might be very different from breaking away from what your family did, what your friends are doing, what you're supposed to be doing. And that leads you to connecting with your heartfelt dreams. And when you have your dreams, there's that vision that emerges you know, those deep visions, like you see yourself in a different reality, you get glimpses in your night dreams and daydreams and synchronicities that happen to you in your life. <clears throat> now with that, somewhere along the line, resistance comes up. Things are gonna get in your way, right? That's part of it. If you look at it as it's part of it, as opposed to I'm stuck at, you see, it's not working again, Philip. You know, I tried it and it's not working or I go back into fear or, oh no, they're rejecting me. I'm you know, I'm back in my little child and cowering. So, hey, you're going to meet resistance, external resistance, internal resistance, things from the past. That's part of this. And you're going to deal with that. We have the holistic EFT, the miracle reframe. We might do that in a minute or two. Demo that. Some tapping, some clearing away resistance. And then the next step is shifting into manifestation mode. Um, and I want to tell you a story to illustrate this in a moment. Uh, seeing your brightest future. Hey, I am going to manifest. And Jane's little affirmation that we shared, you know, I, I love this success and the success loves me. Thank you for the windfall. I'm so grateful for all the things that are coming my way. Or you have your, your ways of, of being, hey, I'm open. I'm finding ways to manifest. And I'm sure you and many of your guests and people are aware of some of these things. And we have many of the ones we teach and have developed. And then somewhere along the path, here you start to take inspired action appropriate and inspired action and a lot of it will maybe failures at trials attempts but it's not a failure because it's a learning experience we know that let me give you a brief uh, story now one of our students Clara who took we have a coaching and healing online training program she was actually a, she is a professor of physical education and she's also a very good athlete However, and she wanted to uh, actually win a golf tournament, <laughs> but she couldn't do it, even though she was very gifted. And uh, she realized it was a mindset thing. Remember, we said resistance to the past. And her father really kind of pressured her into wanting to be successful. And so she was doing a lot of things for him, not for herself, even if the two coincided. Sometimes there's different dreams that your parents want one thing and you want another thing a lot of times they're the same things but you're actually not doing it for yourself this is kind of subtle you're doing it for your parent and that's a different energy a different vibration so by doing some of the holistic eft and doing the training she cleared that and she actually won the, the golf tournament among other dreams that she was fulfilling 
That's a big deal, by the way. I'm an ex golfer. <laughs> okay. It is a really hard sport, but it is. For those who love it. It's an amazing sport. There's so much amazing about it. So, to me, and I've done a lot of. I've done Los Angeles marathons. I've done two of them. There are things I've always felt like I had control over uh, in my training and doing very particular steps, so I could almost ensure myself success. But as far as I'm concerned, golf is one of those things because it's you against you. And it is so much the mind that the set, can, set yeah, it can hinder you or get in the way. So the fact that this client of yours, Clara, was able to use your materials and win, like honestly, you could have said volleyball or you know any other sport or rowing. But the fact that you said golf, to me, that's a really big deal to be able to supersede all the obstacles and whatever she had to do with swings and putts and chips and et cetera, get where she wanted to go. That must've been, I hope she celebrated. When she oh yeah, she, she did. Well, you can imagine hitting a, a golf ball or doing anything you want. Like, Hey, I really want to you know, fill in the blank. I really want to have a successful business, a successful practice, a successful relationship, whatever your dare to dream is. And at that moment, all those, you know, what about my parents, is my father, am I doing, it? you know, the performance anxiety and all the other things are like interference, static. How are you going to hit, you know, hit the ball at your, your peak, your optimum, when all that static is, is interfering and your set point is, is lower than it could be? A hundred percent. And, and what if you have one shot? This is a big deal. So if you have one shot, right? One, you had all this putt. stuff going on right, but it goes awry, it goes in the trees, it goes in the water, it can F you up, right? And you right. have to really work hard to bring it back. And right. yeah, that was that shot. I'm on to the next one. So really kudos to you and kudos to her for creating that. I think that's amazing. And then is there anything else you wanted to say around these success principles. Jay, Jay you wanna come in? <laughs> well, really, there is a lot. There are a lot of things that we could say. I think, to me, also the bottom line is our perspective on ourselves. You know, when we talk about viewing ourselves as creators, I think we also have to be very aware that we tend to go into victimization. In other words, and those two don't exist in the same reality. You know, when we say, if we think we're victims of forces that are larger than us, then we are. If we think that we're creators of something more, then we are that. And it, you could even take that example of, of golf, of, you know, shooting your ball, and I'm not a golfer, I don't know all the terms even, <laughs> to a sand trap or something, and, then, and you're approaching the sand trap, and you know you're stuck there, and you think, and you start feeling like a victim, like, oh, no, this is the end. You know, I'll never get out of this one. And Sand there are so many situations pit. like that. But when I was an architect, <laughs> and one of the things that was really, I think, actually very beneficial for me about it is that bad things can happen on job sites, you know, and I was working with commercial buildings like, you know, convention centers and large office buildings and something would happen and it's not like you know you're dropping you know a glass on the floor it's like all of a sudden you know fifty thousand dollars later this thing has happened and you're sitting there thinking oh it's kind of like my reaction used to be oh my you know now it's all over you know i'm done for now and i think we've all been there and rather than thinking Oh, this is interesting. I wonder what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. And actually, another part about it <laughs> that I really like is the idea of looking for the good. It's like, this may look really awful now, but I'd like to see how it's going to come out much better than I ever thought it was possible. Yeah, it, uh, because it can. Things uh, can come out better than you imagine. A quick story on that one. We used to be, uh, we used to have some buildings we rented that was not our thing, but we tried that. Uh, it's a good way in our cases to lose money, but uh, we tried that and at one point it was a Friday evening and, and the rental was and the other it was far away from us and we're in California. It was in Georgia and the landlord said on a Friday night. Oh, I, I've got some bad news for you, Philip. Uh, the person's child set off the, the fire alarm and water drenched all the sprinklers drenched the whole unit. 
and there was you know big pause and oh, uh what huh and so we just paused there and you know she said i'm going to get on and do everything we can so we hang up the phone and jane and i look at each other and after we sort of recover because it you know it's a little bit of a gut punch there for a moment we say we can't really do anything about it we always have a bottle of champagne for you never know when so we popped open the champagne to celebrate because we knew, as Jane said, something good would come out of this. Not to get drunk, but just to have a glass or two of champagne. Yeah, just one glass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and it, you know, it, 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 we managed it. It wasn't a great thing. We, you know, the insurance covered most of it. We did lose something. But, you know, it was a learning experience, and we recovered, and, and we're having a great life. And that was part of the journey for us, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a story. I just told this story from stage. I actually, in one of my presentations, had to deliver bad news. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> me for getting that job. And so I knew it going into it that there was going to be a huge change in protocol. Most people don't like change. There's a lot of resistance, even if it's for the better. And so I knew I was the one who was going to have to deliver it. And there was no way I was going to go on stage and be serious. So a lot of what I did was very jovial and there was humor in it. There was some seriousness, but you know, it had levity to it. And then I told a story about the word fantastic and how if we were to use the word fantastic, no matter what happens, <laughs> it was possible. So I told a story about a couple who flew from America to France and they arrived in the middle of the night, they're very tired and they go to a hotel where they have had reservations for months and they go to check in and the gentleman steps up to check them in and they give their name and he looks at the roster and says, your name is not here. We don't have a reservation for you. We're completely booked up and they start to, you know, go and have a reaction, but instead they choose and they go fantastic. <laughs> and at that very moment in the lobby is a taxi driver who says, you know, I heard what happened, and I happen to know a really beautiful boutique hotel. I know the people who run it. Why don't I taxi you over there? And they said, fantastic. So the taxi driver drives them to this place, and they could have been very crestfallen, but instead they end up in a place they never would have known about, off the beaten track. The only room that's left is like a presidential suite, which they get right. because the person who runs it is friends with the taxi driver. Fantastic. So you can imagine the entire trip is like this. And I told a lot of stories. It was amazing to me how much everybody in the audience remembered it because we were in a workshop where there was a deluge of rain. Uh, people were running around in high heels outside in the rain and a lot of things that weren't expected. But everybody was running around saying, fantastic. And you know, everyone was living from that place. So the shift that can happen when we use things like that, uh, I already know the potency of that. So I love where this conversation is going. I know when we come back, we're gonna be doing a little bit of um, experimentation for people so they can have a visceral experience of some of what you do. And so for the watchers, for the listeners, this is Dare to Dream, and thank you for tuning in or watching us. If you like watching us, go to youtube.com slash Deb on the radio, subscribe, because it comes right into your box, and isn't that nice and easy? And if you're on one of the many amazing podcast sites, absolutely leave a five-star five review. You know, trust me, I, I don't know if you know how all the uh, metrics works for these, but it's actually quite important. Besides people finding it, it also bumps us up in relevance. And that's what we want. We want to get out there even more than we already are. So for the right people can have this conversation with us. So dare to dream five-star review. I am a visibility media strategist and what I do out in the world is a certified coach. I help you write your book, a page turner. I help you take your book to a guaranteed international bestseller and I help you to get booked on media so you are interviewed. And if you're interested in being booked on media, I am very happy to offer you a free bonus, a gift from me to you about how to use free publicity and get booked right away on media so your book, your business, your being, whatever it is you're doing out in the world can get the exposure it so wants and needs. Go to debbie my name, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H.
ingerdoc.com and receive that report right now. And enjoy. You can become the go-to expert and be interviewed on media. So again, if you're just starting with us or still with us, I am speaking with Philip and Jane Montrose. And again, their website is gettingthrough.org slash holistic. And it's gettingthroughthru.org slash holistic. So great. Here we are. I want to talk about now clearing those downers, clearing those roadblocks, some of what you offer to people to create these shifts. And if, by the way, if there's going to be a process, just so you know, I'm really happy to be the, you know, your audience, your, your, your client. So everybody who's watching or listening can also participate. Well, one of, one of the techniques we developed uh, was a special version of EFT, which many people may be familiar with, the emotional freedom technique, tapping technique. We were the early adopters of it and wrote one of the first books on getting through to your emotions with EFT. And we've developed these uh, additions to EFT because EFT is a wonderful tool, sort of like a let's say, you know, a, a hammer or uh, if you, you know, how do you use it? You know, you can just use it very basically. You could be very skilled at it. So if you know how to do different things with it, you can get much better and quicker results in certain situations, especially if they're more knotty or, or, or tangled. So uh, uh, a phrase we use, because EFT uses an affirmation, and usually it's a, it says, even though I have this problem and this fear, this negative belief, this issue, this... Uh, I, I still can love and accept myself. That's the, the classic EFT original affirmation. You say that while you're tapping a pressure point. Uh, the heel of your hand is one place. So you say that three times aloud. So the mantra we use in what we call the miracle reframe, this is something that many people have watched our videos and, and done this over the years, thousands, is changing that. And this is a very powerful, we talked about vibrations earlier, Debbie, right? Yeah. Listen to this phrase this is something jane and i kind of came up with or downloaded however you know you're in the right place at the right time to come upon something we shared that one earlier about uh, thanking the universe and getting things uh, uh so this one the miracle reframe is anything is possible and miracles are happening now anything is possible and miracles are happening now that's the magic phrase mm -hmm. so with the EFT, you, you start with the issue and you and whatever the issue about your dreaming, even though I have this relationship issue, uh, this uh, health issue, uh, this job issue, whatever it is, or I have this fear, I have this doubt, etc. anything is possible and miracles are happening now. And Can I just insert something yeah, pl for, please, for, the, um, for the audience? If you want to try it, you can actually tap, we'll call it tap along um, mm -hmm. with this. A good place to start is just if you notice any stress, tension, or anxiety, yep. because you want to have something you can kind of measure before and after. Uh, before and after. And so you can kind of, that's something where you can kind of tell right away if there's any change. Right. It, Debbie, did you want to off, did you want to give you something of yourself just to measure, uh, or you don't have to, but did you want to just put mm. something out there in that? Nothing comes to mind. We can do so, it. So, uh, what are you looking for specifically? Well, if you had a, a stressor, some you know something that's a stressor for you, it could be something small. It doesn't have to be the biggest thing in the world. You know, it could be big or small. But sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'll use this one. So I'm uh, navigating into. I'm. I am willing to play big. I'm willing to do stuff in spite of. And the places I'm shifting into is, uh, for instance. Okay. Perfect. I'm, I'm starting brand new masterminds for people who are ready okay. to be visible. Yes. And to That's handle the great project. spirituality. Yeah, I love that. The science of it. So, so the, the resistance, remember we talked about that roadmap earlier and you meet resistance and that's mm -hmm. part of it. Um, and then you do something like we're doing holistic EFT, the miracle reframe to overcome it. Uh, so, what is the uh, challenge or the, the negative emotion, the interference about doing that wonderful, sounds like a wonderful new mastermind idea. What, what would you say is the, the resistance? Yeah, the resistance is like, I want to be there. <laughs> I 
I want to be doing it like dee, 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 dee. and instead there's minutia between me and the dream. There's okay. How do we bring in the client? You know, besides the clients I already work with, but how do I bring in the clients? What kind of webinars do we need to do? Okay. What is the price point? Where are the venues? Uh, yeah, the, you know, how long? All the minutia. Yeah, there's you, a minutia. So, would you say is would you describe it as uncertainty, confusion, those things, or something else? Good question. I think it would be more like confusion, but also like not knowing what I don't know yet. Yeah, confusion and uh, yeah, confusion. Do you have another word for that, Jane? Not knowing things. Confusion is uh, it, when you don't know something, you fear of the unknown. There, well, that could, could, there could be anxiety about anxiety. Because she was saying, like, how yeah, is this? Anxiety. I don't know how this is going to happen. That's you know, it. trying you know, when you're trying to figure everything out, which we never can, anyhow, of course. But we but, always try. You know, it, you can have anxiety, or or it could, it could be confusion, anxiety. It could be yeah, both. I would typify, I don't think I have anxiety. I have a lot of excitement, but I have frustration. Frustration, yeah. okay. Yeah, so really one, we measure the, <laughs> what's called the SUDS level, the standard units of distress. Is, is, so we self-report. So one out of 10, 10 being total, how much confusion? Frustration. Mm -hmm. Confusion would only be a four. Frustration would be big. Yeah, so how much out of 10 on frustration? I'm going to give it a nine. Yeah, okay. So now we'll tap on that and see uh, the shift uh, that can occur with the miracle reframe and EFT, okay? Cool. So we tap the heel of our hand and say, even though I have this frustration. Even though I have this frustration. About the, what, the upcoming mastermind or the mastermind? About creating and leading a mastermind. About creating and leading a mastermind. Um, I know that anything is possible and miracles are happening now. I love this. I know that anything is possible and miracles are happening right now. Even though I have this frustration, I know that anything is possible and miracles are happening now. Even though I have this frustration, anything is possible and miracles are happening right now. Even though I have this frustration, I know that anything is possible and miracles are happening now. Even though I have this frustration, miracles are happening and Anything is possible right now. Right. That's fine. Uh, it's very forgiving. Okay, so now we're going to tap the points. I'll just, I'll just point them out for the audio people. Or, uh, so you tap the top of your head. I call it kind of the good boy, good girl point tapping. So say um, this issue or this, this uh, frustration. This frustration. And then the eyebrow, either or both sides at the eyebrow where it meets in the nose, this frustration tapping about five or six times firmly or touching this frustration and the side of the eye either or both sides this frustration this frustration under the eye the bone there in the middle this frustration either this or both sides frustration under the nose between the nose and the lip this frustration this frustration and then the chin middle lower of the chin tapping or touching firmly five to seven times this frustration. The collarbone, the ridge underneath your neck, there's a bone and there's a little bump in the middle toward the middle of your chest on either or both sides underneath it. It might be tendered. These are all pressure points. You're tapping and saying again, this frustration. This frustration. Under the armpit, either or both sides, kind of like you're hugging yourself, you're tapping with your whole hand. There's a specific point, but it's not like acupuncture. You just get the general error, you'll get it. This frustration, you're tapping or touching. And I do the monkey version. <laughs> you can do the monkey version. Yeah. yeah, I can do that too. Okay. And now we do what one little thing we part of holistic EFT, we we do the reset process. We just added it's two more things where you tap across the top of your head laterally so you get the left and right brain and you, you can say anything is possible on the top of your head. Anything is possible. And now you're tapping your heart to integrate this into your heart and miracles are happening now. And miracles are happening now. And you take a deep breath. And we allow things to shift and reintegrate. And, and, and that was one round of the holistic EFT, the miracle reframe with the reset process there at the end. Uh, anything you're noticing now, Debbie? Yeah, totally, of course. I mean, how could you not, as far as I'm concerned? Uh, <laughs> I know I find this really powerful. So I'm super calm and relaxed, but I feel this is what it feels like in my body, like elements, particles, atoms, 
slowed down puddle expansion the best i could describe it but there is definitely this and the emotion now about the creating the new mastermind the emotion or the set point where are we kind of vibrating now at i get a six okay a six of uh, frustration is six yes so six so you still have some left okay and that's fine so so the people just to get a sense of what this is not everything disappears with one round of tapping, although sometimes it does, and especially the more complex it is, because there's probably a lot of pieces to this. So you could do another round, and we can just tap, and we're just tapping quickly the top of the head, like remaining. Is it frustration, or is there something else that emerged, by the way? There's sometimes other things that come out. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, I, so when you ask this good question, so I hear overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, right. And one out of 10, 10 being total, how overwhelmed? An eight. Okay, so that's higher. So we would tap on that. And we could just do another round, this overwhelm. We're tapping the points again, the top of the head, this overwhelm. This overwhelm. Okay, and the eyebrow point again, either both sides, this overwhelm, you can touch or tap it. This overwhelm. Side of the eyes, this overwhelm. This overwhelm. Under the eye, this overwhelm. This overwhelm. Under the nose, this overwhelm. This overwhelm. Chin, this overwhelm. This overwhelm. And the collarbone, this overwhelm. <sighs> this overwhelm. Right, and under the arm, or arm this pits. This overwhelm. And then the reset points on the top, anything is possible where you're tapping across the top of the head for the left and right brain. Anything is possible. And tapping your heart, integrating your heart intelligent and miracles are happening now, opening your heart. And miracles are happening now. So it's a way of reconfiguring energy, of seeing different possibilities, being in a different place, shifting your set point, and it's something which uh, may continue to integrate over time too, and there may be more pieces to it. Uh, just uh, uh, any uh, thoughts now where you are at this point, Debbie? Yeah, that was really interesting uh, because overwhelm is actually a thing for me. It's sometimes a default. And I ended this feeling so excited. Like the process wasn't scary or overwhelming. It just was like, oh, it is the journey to get there. So I just feel excited right now. Great. Jane, did you want to mention anything? Yes, that made me think uh, when you said excited, Philip, we, we didn't have, he didn't have the chance really to go through the point when we, when he got to action, he mentioned inspired action. Mm -hmm. And that's a certain state. And it, it is a state where you're just excited about creating what you want. Not, not I'm afraid it won't work, or I don't know all the details, or, you know, there's so many mm -hmm. things. It just, I'm doing this. This is wonderful. Yeah, it's inspired heart. action. Not if you're afraid and you're taking action. Right. I think everybody probably has examples of that. The results are not likely to be what you want. You want to be excited and your heart's in it, right? It's like you're following your heart and it's happening. Period. Like that, Clara. Like the the golfer story, and when her heart was in and her heart was open, and that. That inspired action was the seventh step of the Heart of Success roadmap that we write about in the Ultimate Paradigm Shift book. So you, a lot of people dare to dream and they want to just take action. And some people are more action oriented. That is a right. fact. But nonetheless, if they're not clear enough, if they haven't done the clearing work, they're going to tr literally trip themselves up in different ways. And they're not going to get the success that they could. Mm. Well, that was so beautiful. I feel good. And for anybody who's watching this or listening to this, just know you can rewind that and go through it and see where your numbers go from where you started. And as far as I'm concerned, you'll probably literally see and feel them go down until there can be that neutrality from which to create. So just a quick shout out to the sponsor for this show, Dr. Mm -hmm. Dane here. And access consciousness. They create 
amazing things on this planet. If you're ready to take a course in access consciousness, you can go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com or accessconsciousness.com. They've got classes and books and pretty much any subject you are ready to deal with. It's very powerful work, energy work indeed. And also, if you're ready to, if you are a small business operator like me or an entrepreneur or an author, and you would like a place to put your products and have them sell passively online, go to Thinkific. It's unbelievable what they offer there. It's a very popular platform. And it's T-H-N-K dot C-C slash Deb. So we're coming to the end here. And again, I'm speaking with Philip and Jane Montrose at gettingthroughthru.org slash holistic. This is Dare to Dream, Philip and Jane. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Well, you, you're asking. Oh, go ahead. Go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, as you might imagine, we, we've led lead quite a creative life. We have a lot of trainings, a lot of projects. So we're continuing to uh, update then. We have a holistic coaching and healing training, a one-year training, and that's always updating too. And people make a lot of shifts into what we call the spiritual stages. Uh, but we have an intuition project. We're using intuition and healing coming up. We have quite a few projects. It's how many we can get through in a year between updating all the many books and projects and trainings we have online and hard copy things too. So we have a lot of things in, in, <laughs> in, in the pipeline, so to speak. Jane, do you want to add to anything that, that it's <laughs> yeah, I th And Debbie, you're probably familiar with this too, is that it's so easy to imagine something you'd want to create. <laughs> we, you know, we go, we can imagine many, many things and our, our real challenge is to stay focused and pretty much, I wouldn't say do one thing at a time because we're doing so many things already, but just really focus in on whatever project we're doing. And right now we're, we are pretty close to completing our intuition uh, product and a, a new book and, and uh, videos and things on and intuition. And a course to go with it. Right. Which is, right. we're very excited about that. We're, I think we're, We've we've gone out very broad with a lot of things, and now we're we're focusing on going deeper into the ones that we have, really. Well, fantastic! Uh, I wish you tremendous fortune with all of that. For people who are watching again, I love and fill in the blank. I love blank, and blank loves me. God or the universe or source wants me to have more of it. More is coming. And of course, you've got their process and more online at their website to play around with, plus their book, The Ultimate Paradigm Shift, which you can get on Amazon. And uh, Philip Jane, thank you so much for sharing the processes, your wisdom, and your brilliance today on Dare to Dream. Thanks for having us on, Debbie. Yeah, thank you, Debbie. Debbie. This was a joy. What you're doing is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And if I mastermind it out there in the world, I'll give you some credit <laughs> for my freedom to get there because that was really fantastic. I enjoyed that. And I end today's show with this quote. It's actually a quote from that they feature in their book, which is a Chinese proverb. And it says, tension is who you think you should be. Relaxation is who you are. In the next coming weeks on Dare to Dream, you want to tune in because I'm featuring Brian Seth Hurst. He's a spiritual medium, medium, spiritual medium, and he offers powerful guidance. Also, the amazing Carrie Samuels is coming on the show. Those of you who love numerology and forecasts, she's going to be here doing that very directly. And these are going to be big transformation conversations. Dare to Dream is your number one transformation conversation with Debbie Dashinger. Again, subscribe to these inspirational YouTube videos, youtube.com slash Deb on the radio, and get your publicity report, how you can become the go-to expert and be interviewed on media. Use publicity today to exponentialize what you're doing out in the world. Go to debbiedashinger.com. Thank you for joining us today. And remember the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place. <laughs>